Eddie Dunbar, big fan of Eddie, Irish man, had him on the show a bunch of times. He's always great value. He's hilarious, but also super talented bike rider. He talked about his power dropping in the hotter conditions mm-hmm. last year in the Vuelta, where he's super successful. I think he won two stages in yep. the Vuelta last year. He used Vecta yep. in a run into this. He, he said it's a game changer. How were you able to model that power drop you using core sensors, I assume? No, not at all. Um, it was actually when we use the power prediction models for uh, climb stages. So we are able to predict, like, for example, oh, today it's going to be 400 watts for this climb based on um, the modeling that we have for the first part of the race. But with machine learning model, most of people, people say sometimes that this is a black box and it's kind of impossible to understand why and why there is this prediction in weights higher or lower than in another case. But there are few techniques that are able to explain why machine learning model is predicting this value. And so with this kind of approach, we were able to measure and explain, for example, in this kind of race condi- conditions, you're going to save 10 watts or you're going to be 10 watts lower. And so that's how we kind of measure the impact of temperature elevation on his performance to try to quantify it and determine the stages that were most optimal for him, but also to try to optimize training before the races. Uh, so trying to tell him like, for example, in after this value in temperature, you have a big drop. It's not linear, it's really personalized. Uh, we have lots of examples with riders like just temperature doesn't have any impact on them. Yeah. But like for some of them above 28 degrees, it's like huge drop. And so it's trying to understand that so that they have a number on it and so they can adapt it. It's get, look, I can't exactly remember what stages Eddie won last year, but both of them were solo. Yeah. You have a huge pacing component to being solo, you had a pretty big role if yeah. you went into those <laughs> stages last year. Yeah, yeah. and also in the, um, what is important is also on the nutrition part uh, where we had a few predictions on like in terms of kilojoules, kilojoules he would expense for each stage. And so being able to model that and model, you know, the the rate of consumption of those kilojoules over the, um, the stages. So. Uh, talk me around how does that one work so it's a y- individualized kilojoule recommendation yeah based on his data from all the races data he has uh just like build a machine learning model and predict it based on the race um features and this is something that's going to be rolled out as part of the, the consumer platform within vector not yet uh because i think the goal with the collaboration that we have with the pros is just like being at the forefront of what we can do with data for performance but not everything is designed to just being applied to everyone. So that's why we try uh, and we're going to integrate um, a carbs recommendation tool within Vecta, but it's not going to be as precise as what we use for the pros because they don't have the same needs and also it requires like lots of data and that's kind of the issue for the everyday rider. So what happens now when Eddie comes back for nationals and <laughs> carves me up, I'm like, he's got an unfair advantage here. You're going to have Hopefully. to hook me up. I need my model. This is the same with equipment. Uh, maybe you can buy equipment, but like data is becoming like an unfair advantage. And so that's why teams are kind of pushing for more data science within team. It is interesting because UCI have a rule that all equipment used by the pros has to be commercially available to purchase yep. for consumers. But data, it doesn't have that rule yet. Probably. Uh, I'm not an UCI expert, uh, but they most of the teams now have a data scientist internally. So all the teams have kind of uh, start to have more and more data modeling, some prediction tools, uh, trying to understand like also the competition, uh, how the teams are built in terms of scouting, but also in terms of race, um, squad. And um, so, yeah, data is becoming like crucial. Yeah, I was talking to Stanis head coach uh, Vasilis, and he was saying behind the scenes, the clamor has been for data scientists. There's a huge rush to try and get the best data scientists into World Tour teams now. Yeah, uh, we've seen a few shifts between uh, data scientists moving team recently as well. Uh, it's kind of like- There's the big salaries are gonna be coming for data scientists. Uh, yeah, I think so. In World Tour, it's, <laughs> uh, who would have thought data scientists were gonna be cool? <laughs> <Good> question. <laughs> but also I think the complexity with data science is like, they're very good data, data scientists, but they need to understand um, cycling data yeah they need to understand like spot science and try being able to model in data science models um cycling 
and also sports psychology and as well i had a friend who a huge advocate of ai i actually coach him and he's doing a time trial last night a 10 mile time trial and he sent me back his proposed pacing schedule for the time trial mm. based off analysis on chat gpt where he'd taken a bunch of his files upload them into chat gpt given a gpx file to chat gpt mm. and said model me based on today's weather conditions my perfect pacing strategy it gave him a very very good pacing strategy and he's like came back he's like would you make any changes to that or is that perfect and i was like mm. the only change i'd potentially make is to slightly negative split it and that maybe makes no sense in the data you have to have ridden the time trial and blown and known the psychological cost of dipping below your mm. target to really understand how painful that can be. It feels like a slow march to the death, especially he had he was turning into headwind conditions for the last mm. couple of kilometers. It's like if you're slightly under pace into a headwind, it's just soul destroying and it can become this you know momentum that just gathers and now instead of being 10 watts under schedule you're like oh this is hopeless i'm not even close to the podium and you're 20 mm. watts under schedule it's still i think you need that kind of confluence of data sports and a little bit of almost empathy or you know eq around being an athlete yeah definitely and um i think it goes in the same direction as why we want to keep human coach at the center of the platform with Invicta as well is like psychology and performance so huge and motivation part as well uh, that it's important to have this kind of like yeah what human can bring that AI is never going to at least your emotional roller coaster exactly I, I'm just I'm picturing me sitting on the side of the road because I've sent these voice messages to coaches over the years where like I can't do the interviews. <laughs> I just can't hit the numbers. But now I'm confiding in a chat GPT model on the side of the road. I'm telling Vexta. I'm sitting in the shower wearing my full kit, sending Vexta a voice message. God, I just couldn't hit the numbers. 